Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we will be discussing one more para summary exercise. We have already conducted three exercises and uh, some questions and we have covered the basic techniques in uh, which are required for you to uh, solve the para summary exercises. So uh, it's very simple. You have to understand the a passage given very very clearly without any ambiguity or confusion and then you have to go through the options and uh, first eliminate the options which are having certain contradictions or which are not uh, uh, in tune with the passage given then whatever remains will be your probable answers out of which the best option you have to select the best option will always be the option that gives the maximum information regarding the passage with uh, without any uh, discrepancy or without any uh, exaggeration discrepancy or mistake so such an option will be your best summary so this is the uh, process that you have to follow over a period of time you will become proficient in that initially you may have some problems and uh, some people are saying that most of the questions that i am discussing they are of a very high level yes correct most of the questions that we are uh, discussing are taken from the either from previous year cat papers or from the a GMAT papers of previous year so that uh, you are equipped or you are having familiarity with these kind of actual questions that will be asked in your exam. If we uh, conduct our exercise with uh, uh, simple questions which are easy to crack, you will not be able to crack the actual questions in the exam. So that is why uh, we will be discussing only the previous year questions or the papers or some questions which are of a very high level so that you are uh, skill in uh, doing the or attempting the questions increases uh, gradually and uh, initially uh, I am giving a lot of explanations I am trying it, to make it as explanatory as possible so that all the people with, uh, with many people with various levels of uh, standard or various levels of proficiency uh, will be watching the video so in order to cater to all the people so I am uh, making it more explanatory but uh, as we progress I will reduce my explanation so that you are uh, able to do it on your own you become gradually self-reliant that is the idea so without uh, any further ado we will be going uh, to the questions so read the passage first understand it then go through the options do the process of elimination try to spot the correct answer Okay, so the passage is uh, discussing a concept called McGurk effect. What is McGurk effect? This, uh, uh, this theory was emerged because of a, an experiment conducted by uh, two people, McGurk and McDonald. Uh, a powerful multi-sensory illusion. What is a multi-sensory illusion? Uh, illusion or a, a, a something that is not real that is uh, uh, created by different senses or uh, when uh, different senses of our body like speech hearing uh, visual smell uh, touch these are all the different senses when multi sensory organs of our body are involved in understanding something uh, the uh, uh, perception or the understanding that we get is a uh, combination of all these senses and it may not be a correct understanding so this is the meaning and how they uh, undertook the experiment they created uh, 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 they first they uh, cre uh, created a voice articulating a consonant means a person was recorded 
speaking the consonant ba 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 what is a consonant anything that is not a vowel is called a consonant so uh, the person was uh, uh, articulating means speaking so uh, they recorded a voice speaking a consonant ba 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 and dubbed it with the face articulating another consonant ga 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 so uh, what they did they first recorded the voice of a person speaking the uh, words ba 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 and then uh, he was uh, captured in camera speaking another consonant ga 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 and they mixed it together and when the only the voice was shown to the people or when only the speech was shown to the people even though the acoustic speech signal was well recognized acoustic means sound signal acoustic anything acoustic means this anything connected with sound is called acoustic so acoustic speech signal was recognized alone means uh, uh, when the people were uh, uh, allowed the opportunity to hear the voice alone without the visual they clearly recognized the person speaking the correct uh, consonant ba 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 but when they were given uh, this combined visual as well as speech where this person was uh, seen as speaking the word ga 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 but the voice is of ba 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 then what was the result the result was they uh, the people understood that or the people thought that the person was speaking da 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 so that is why uh, when uh, it was heard as another consonant after dubbing with incongruent visual speech was what, what is incongruent something that is incompatible so uh, the, his uh, actual speech is incompatible with what he is seen as speaking so he is basically recorded in camera speaking the word ga 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 and the voice over or the voice is actually combined uh, uh, where he is speaking as ba 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 so the visual is that of the person speaking ga 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 and the sound is that of the special person speaking ba 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 and they were, when it is mixed together and shown to the people they understood it as a completely different thing da 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 so that is why his uh, this illusion is termed as mugger effect it has been replicated many times and it has been replicated means many times this experiment was conducted and almost all the time the same result was there and it has sparked an abundance of research and the reason for the greater impact and why it is happening because uh, it is a striking demonstration as yes, a remarkable demonstration of multi-sensory integration means when uh, many or different senses of our body they are integrated or they are involved in understanding something uh, in the case here it is auditory and visual information so the so, uh, sound and the visual information is merged it becomes a unified integrated percept percept means understanding so when the sound or the auditory information as well as the visual information are processed by the different senses of our body the uh, combination uh, results in a different understanding that is a meaning so this is called mug effect, effect so in simple terms what you can say is that when people hear a person speaking something they hear it correctly but when they see a visual of this person speaking something else in the visual whereas the sound is of the original uh, speech the they are not able to catch the original speech they are able to uh, for they think that it is he's speaking something entirely different it is neither the uh, uh, thing that he is actually seen as speaking in the camera nor the thing he is speaking in the voice it is completely different so that is a mugger effect and it is because of the integration of our different senses when they are involved in understanding and information the uh, the perception or the understanding is uh, uh, coming in a different manner so this is the meaning now we will have to go to the options so option a visual speech mismatched with auditory speech can result in the perception of an entirely different message this illusion is known as mugu effective so here the passage is talking about visual speech and it is mismatched with auditory speech correct because the in camera is speaking something else whereas he's uh, actually speaking something else so that is why mismatch and can result in the perception or understanding of an entirely different message this illusion is known as mugu effect this is a good answer uh, there are no uh, inconsistencies with the passage here it is capturing almost all the the things given in the passage correctly this could be your answer option b when the quality of auditory information is poor visual information wins over auditory information so here it says that the quality of the sound uh, given is poor the passage is not saying anywhere that the quality of the speech recorded alone is a poor of poor quality it is not given and another thing is visual information wins over auditory information which uh, means the when the person is seen speaking something else and when the, he is actually speaking something the 
uh, whatever he is seen as speaking, that is what people understand. Is this correct? No, the passage says that when the visual information is combined with the auditory information, the understanding of the people is completely different. It is neither the visual speech or the auditory speech. They are understanding it as the person speaking as something da da da. So he, they are not uh, understanding or they are not thinking that he is speaking the visual speech, which is ga ga ga. So visual information winning over auditory information is wrong. This is a wrong thing that is. Uh, not stated in the passage. Option C, the Mugger effect, which is a demonstration of multi-sensory integration has been replicated many times. So this again is a, uh, a correct statement. There are no mistakes here. It has been replicated. It is a demonstration of multi-sensory integration. That is true. And it has been replicated many times. That also is given. Uh, it has sparked an abundance of research. And it has been replicated many times. So this is a demonstration of multi-sensory integration. Everything is correct. So this is also a, a good uh, statement in not a, an incorrect statement. There is no mistake here. Option uh, D, when auditory speech signal does not match with the visual speech movements, the acoustic speech signal is confusing and the integration of the two is imperfect. When auditory speech signal means the what the person is actually speaking does not match with the visual speech movements. Yes, uh, it is not matching with the what is seen as speaking in the camera. The acoustic speech signal is confusing. In such cases, the acoustic speech is confusing. Is it given in the passage that people are getting confused about what he is saying? No, the, the people have no confusion. There is no question of any confusion here. When the visual speech is give, shown to the people, people directly assume that the, he is speaking as da da da. So there is no confusion to the people. So the acoustic speech signal is confusing is not correct. And the integration of the two is imperfect means when they are mixed together, the outcome is imperfect. Is it given? Is it given that it is imperfect? No, the integration is resulting in a different understanding. That is what the passage says that the way when we uh, auditory and visual information is merged into a unified integrated percept. So when they are combined together, the understanding is different. So that is it is not saying that it is imperfect understanding the whether it might be imperfect, but the passage saying that when the integration is uh, uh, it is getting into a unified integrated understanding whether that understanding is imperfect or uh, not per, uh, the outcome of the integration is imperfect the result of the integration is imperfect the integration means the combining of the visual speech signal which the uh, uh, auditory speech signal so is the integration or the mixing or the dubbing imperfect that is not given here that is why this option is also wrong you have to carefully see the options to uh, find out the mistakes so b and d are eliminated so you have option a and option c likely answers so very clearly you can say that option a will be the better summary because our question is to find a summary summary should contain the main information in the passage option c is only talking about the replication of the mugger effect what is mugger effect is not at all given here whereas option a clearly tells us what is mugger effect and how it has been uh, what is the result of uh, this all these things are given here in the option a so option a is definitely giving you the uh, crux of the passage any summary that gives you the important points in the passage should be a better summary so that is why a should be the better summary rather than c so c you can eliminate so a is the answer here i hope it is clear there are no confusions we will go to the one more thing if you have any doubts or confusions or any kind of clarifications needed, needed regarding the questions that we discuss in the videos, uh, please join my WhatsApp group. There is the description is given in the link below. We will be, I'll be giving you personal messages you can, regarding your doubts and other things. So please, you can message me personally or in the group. So whatever uh, doubts you have will be uh, clarifying and many other important uh, information regarding uh, the management exams are also shared in the group so it would be better for all candidates to uh, be members of the whatsapp group description is uh, given in the link sorry link is given in the description sorry again confusion right go to the second question
I'll give you some uh, meaning so that your understanding is clear. Papacy means anything connected with the Pope. Pope was the head, Pope is the head of the Catholic uh, Christians uh, in the world. So papacy means the uh, Pope and the system uh, integrated or associated with Pope uh, is called papacy. And ecclesiastical functions, what is ecclesiastical functions? Ecclesiastical function means any connection, functions or duties or uh, 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 ceremonies associated with uh, religion or cr Christian church or Catholic church, they are called ecclesiastical functions. Or in uh, simple terms, you can say religious functions. Doctrine of sovereign equality means the theory of sovereign equality. Sovereign means supreme equality. Means individuals are having equal rights. They have uh, the their power to decide about their fates, whatever their actions they have to do, they can do. They are free to live according to their uh, wish. That is called sovereign equality. All people are uh, having the, or people are equal. They have the total freedom to live life as they want without any outside impositions. That is known as sovereign equality. Leviathan is a theory or a book. How do you know that? Because the word or the first letter is given in capital letter L. So uh, whenever any uh, any uh, word in between a sentence is given uh, with a capital letter beginning, then you can say that it is a proper noun. Proper noun will always indicate something particular. So here it is a book which is published in 1651. All right. So the passage is basically talking about the emergence of sovereign states. So states means uh, the sovereign governments, how the sovereign governments emerged after the Treaty of Westphalia. So some treaty that occurred in Europe must have been the Treaty of Westphalia. So one after the treaty, what happened? The Pope and uh, the all the Christian uh, uh, the paraphernalia or the Christian system connected with Pope. Pope used to be very powerful in Europe during the medieval period and uh, the Pope was directly ruling the countries or provinces and many kings were controlled by the Pope. So that is why this kind of uh, control of governments or control of countries by Pope uh, uh, reduced after the Treaty of Westphalia and Pope became confined only to religious functions. So the power of the papacy decreased after the Treaty of Westphalia, Westphalia and the uh, Pope was confined only to religious functions. The papacy did not uh, interfere in the uh, ruling of the countries and doctrine of sovereign equality reigned. So this was the condition after the Treaty of Westphalia. Then how uh, can one justify the uh, theory uh, or functions of a secular political order or how do you explain the emergence of a secular political system after the Treaty of Westphalia. So that is the question. So the next sentence is talking about which political theory could explain the origin and justify the functions of secular political system or a secular political system, how it came to being after the Treaty of Westphalia uh, when the Pope had been, uh, the power of the Pope and uh, his uh, system was reduced and he became only a religious figure. So how did the political order emerge? So this the theory was given by Thomas Hobbes in his book called Leviathan published after three years of the treaty. And in that he says that uh, once the uh, Pope, uh, uh, Pope's power was reduced, the people became sovereign. They had the uh, supreme power to do whatever they want. So what has happening when there is absence of any authority? what people will do everybody will be uh, doing whatever he or she wants so there will be complete anarchy so it produced a war like of all against all so the state of the nature is state of nature means it is the uh, state of human nature where everybody will when there is nobody to control them what will happen 
they everybody will try to amass power or wealth or whatever he wants for himself so the person who has have a, having uh, more power or the person who has got uh, more kind of uh, 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 weapons or armory or things in his custody such persons will always be uh, uh, riding roughshod or trying to dominate other people so this produced a war of all against all so there was a kind of insecurity among the people why insecurity because nobody is secure nobody is safe because there is uh, a complete system of anarchy or strife that is going on in the uh, european uh, countries at that time so that is why uh, the, the to escape such intolerable insecurity people delivered their rights to a sovereign power in return for the sovereign powers provision of security for all within the state's border so the people voluntarily uh, gave up their power to a, a government or a king or a, any kind of political order in return for a security so the uh, people uh, wanted to give up their power so that they can live safely without any uh, fear or any kind of thing that is how uh, this kind of governments emerged because governments what are within the state's border means within the country's border governments promised safety and security for the people in return people gave up their power or sovereignty to the government so sovereign states monopoly on power was established as the only way to overcome the perpetual fear of violent death and war so people were uh, perpetual means uh, always afraid of violent death and war so in order to overcome that fear the people gave up their sovereignty to the government or the state and the state became a monopoly on power so they started having complete control over the power so this is the meaning so basically in simple terms what you can say uh, when the, after the treaty of westphalia the pope uh, power was reduced pope uh, stopped ruling or controlling the uh, states or provinces under their control so people became sovereign people wanted to do whatever they were people could do whatever they wanted because the sovereign equality was there but in a state of sovereign equality what happened there was complete anarchy there was all people were fighting against each other so there was total insecurity and fear so in order to escape that insecurity and fear people gave up their sovereign power to a a government or a, a kind of political system where the government or the political system will uh, ensure safety and security for the people in return people uh, will uh, give the complete power to the sovereign god so this is the meaning so once you have understood it you can go to the options and find out the summary see understanding is the important thing once the understanding is complete the finding out the su summary may not be very difficult it takes only a uh, very little time so option a thomas hobbes theorized the voluntary surrender of rights by people as essential for the emergence of sovereign rights so it this is an option that appears to be correct thomas hobbes theorized the voluntary surrender of rights by people correct as essential for the emergence of sovereign states so the word essential is the problem it means that if people had not uh, given their sovereign power to the governments the sovereign governments could not have happened because essential means the basic condition or the necessary condition the word essential means the necessary condition so the passage is not saying that this was a necessary condition for the emergence of sovereign states thomas hobbes is theorizing that because people gave up their sovereign power to the states or the governments the governments became powerful whether it was the only thing or the essential thing necessary for the emergence of sovereign states thomas hobbes is not saying anything about it means uh, the word essential means that if people had not done this the essential or the sovereign governments would not have emerged that is not given in the passage so this is something that the uh, the uh, this is something imaginary it is not something that is given in the passage as a result of which this option may not be a good summary so there is only one word here this may but that makes this a weak summary but that word is enough just one word will make all the difference so here you will not be considering it as a good summary because of this particular thing option b hobbes theorized the emergence of sovereign states as a form of transactional governance to limit the power of the papacy here the first part is correct so hobbes theorized the emergence of a trans sovereign states as a form of transactional governance what is transactional governance 
you give me something i'll give you something that is transaction means uh, give and take so here it is a transactional governments governance it is correct because people uh, gave the sovereign power to the government government in return gave security to the people so it is a transaction so transactional governance that is correct but the transactional government sees it to limit the power of the pope this is a problem because the Pope's power was already limited with the Treaty of Westphalia that we have already seen in the passage that the, the uh, with the Treaty of Westphalia, Pope had already, already been confined to religious functions. So his power had already reduced. So uh, this thing happened afterwards. The regarding the transactional government governance happened afterwards because once the Pope's power was reduced, there was total anarchy, insecurity. So in order to overcome the insecurity, uh, the uh, transactional governance happened. So if you say that the transactional governance was to the purpose was to limit the power of the papacy, it is wrong. So that is why this is also is a wrong uh, answer. Option C, Thomas here, the, the Hobbes theorized that our sovereign states emerged out of people's voluntary decide to overcome the sense of insecurity and establish the doctrine of, doctrine of sovereign equality. Again, something that appears to be correct, but there is a mistake here. This part is correct. Sovereign states emerged out of people's voluntary desire to overcome the sense of insecurity. That part is correct. What, what about this part? And establish a doctrine of sovereign equality. Is this correct? No, because the doctrine of sovereign equality was established with the Treaty of Westphalia itself. See, the, with the Treaty of Westphalia, papacy was confined to religious functions and the doctrine of sovereign equality was established. So, here you are saying that the sovereign of uh, doctrine of sovereign equality was established after the governments uh, and the people had a, uh, or a, or had a uh, treaty that you give me security, I'll give you uh, power. No, that is wrong. So the doctrine of sovereign equality was already established with the, the Treaty of Westphalia. So the sovereign states emerging out of voluntary desire, etc. to establish sovereign equality is wrong. So that is why this also is a wrong statement. Now coming to the option D. Theory of the theory, the emergence of sovereign states based on a transactional relationship between people and sovereign state that was necessitated by a sense of insecurity. Correct. So the transactional relationship between the people and the states uh, emerged because of the it was necessary for the people. The people were overcome by a sense of insecurity. So the it was necessary for people to uh, uh, people to have a sense of security. So in order to have that sense of security, they gave up their power. To the government in return for security so this is a good option it is clearly giving you what the passage is saying so option d should be the answer so once you have eliminated a b and c you don't have any problem in finding out that d should be the correct answer so d is the best summary available now go to the third question I'll give you some this thing heterogeneity diversity diversity heterogeneity means diversity continuum means continuation or the uh, there is no uh, particular feature to distinguish between uh, something and something else is called continuum means they are continuous so here the rural urban continuum means you are not able to identify whether a particular area is a rural area or an urban area everything looks the same that is called continuum and heterogeneity means diversity. Urban settings means uh, the city areas. Threshold means uh, value. Fixed threshold means a fixed value. Multifaceted means different or diverse again.
All right. So the passage is basically discussing uh, the problems uh, in uh, identifying the uh, measuring or uh, problems in measuring the rate of urbanization. Urbanization means how uh, cities are means rural areas are being converted into cities. That is called urbanization. So you know the, it is very difficult to measure urbanization in a consistent manner because there is a, a rural urban continuum because it is very difficult to distinguish between rural areas and urban areas and the urban areas are very diverse because uh, within the urban areas there are places which look like looks like rural areas. So that is why the heterogeneity or the diversity of urban settings because of this it is very difficult so it is posing an obvious challenge to identifying urban areas and measuring the urbanization rates in a consistent way and it is uh, not a problem within one country it is there in uh, different countries so it is a problem within the countries and across countries means within one country this problem is there and different countries also the same problem is there and uh, right now what is happening an objective methodology is used where uh, two or one or two uh, matrices means one or two criteria uh, with the fixed values are used and it is objective methodology what is an objective methodology where no subjectivity is involved what is subjective what is subjective objective means there is no subjectivity what is subjectivity personal opinions or personal viewpoints that is called subjectivity so in an objective methodology there is no uh, personal opinions or personal uh, judgments involved means it is completely maybe computerized or using some technology they are uh, trying to use this so that is called an objective methodology so he, here it says that that objective methodology where two or three one or two uh, parameters are used and they have fixed threshold values will, will not be adequate in capturing the diversity so you need a richer combination of criteria means of some more additional criteria should be needed and uh, the uh, what is the other thing because of the diverse nature of, uh, of a city some additional criteria should be needed and not only that these criteria should be interpreted jointly with uh, an element of human judgment means uh, right now objective methodology will be used objective methodology means without any subjectivity means no human judgment is involved only maybe technology computers or something else will be uh, uh, doing the uh, analysis but the joint interpretation means the human uh, human element also should be involved means uh, some human beings also should be involved in the interpretation of the values along with the computers means the technology plus the human interpretation are required for uh, trying to understand the uh, urbanization rates or uh, in the interpretation of the criteria so basically it says that because of the diversity of the city areas it is very difficult to uh, uh, measure the rate of urbanization in a consistent way and the uh, right now uh, uh, some objective methodology is used where uh, only one or two criteria with fixed values are uh, used this is not adequate you need more criteria and joint interpretation uh, uh, along with that is technology plus human beings uh, are required in interpreting the criteria so you need more criteria to assess the rate of urbanization and the joint interpretation also is required for uh, assessing the values this is the meaning so once you have understood the passage the uh, answer becomes very easy option a with the diversity of urban landscape the diverse and measurable criteria for defining urban areas may need to be supplemented with human judgment so because of the diversity of urban landscapes that is given here uh, cities are very diverse so um, diverse and measurable criteria means more criteria should be the rich combination of criteria is given here right that is a diverse criteria so richer combination of criteria and measurable means they are able they can be they shall, should have values so measurable criteria for defining urban areas may to be supplemented with human judgment so they are uh, not only objective methodologies but subjective methodologies should be there so this is a good answer keep it in your mind option b current methodologies used to define urban and rural areas are no longer relevant and are to our being able to study trends in urbanization so here it says that current methodologies are not relevant at all this no longer relevant may be a problem here because it's the passage says that current methodology should be supplemented with more criteria and human judgment 
that is what the passage says whereas option says that current methodology is not relevant at all that means that the system should be completely reorganized that's not given in the passage the passage is saying that now only one or two criteria are used with fixed thresholds you need more criteria or a richer combination of criteria and uh, it should be supplemented with human judgment means the uh, the author is recommending and uh, some additions to the existing system whereas the uh, option b saying that the current methodology is not relevant at all it should be completely cancelled this is not correct so that is why this is not a good option option c the difficulty of accurately identifying urban areas means that we need to create a rich combination of criteria that can be applied to all urban areas so difficulty of accurately identifying urban areas correct means that we need to create a rich combination of criteria again correct that can be applied to all urban areas again correct so this is again not a wrong answer it is containing all the essential facts so this could be another probable answer keep it in your mind option d distinguishing between urban and rural areas might call for some judgment on the objective methodology being used to define a city's functions distinguishing means identifying between uh, rural and urban area might call for some judgment on the objective methodology used so here you have to be very careful calling for some judgment means what call for means ask for ask for some judgment on the objective methodology means some opinion on the objective methodology means you have to evaluate the objective methodology means whatever methodology is being used now you have to assess the methodology that is the meaning of might call for some judgment of the objective methodology being used so here is it correct the passage is saying that the you the current methodology has to be supplemented so they have already evaluated the correct uh, the current methodology and they have understood that there are some there there is some need for certain uh, adjustments or the certain improvements in the methodology and those improvements are also suggested here whereas the option is saying that might fall call for some judgment on the objective method. means you need to evaluate or assess the correct method the current methodology and to and check whether this should be improved or not so that is not correct because the passage has already done that in the passage this judgment on the objective methodology so here the important thing is judgment on the objective methodology judgment on anything means you try to evaluate something or logically analyze something is called judging on something so when you want the here the passage is not saying that you should judge the objective methodology the passage has already done the evaluation of the objective methodology that is currently used and said that this is not enough you need a rich combination and uh, additional criteria plus human judgment that is already done in the passage so the pa this option is only saying that you need to evaluate the correct methodology which is wrong so judgment on the objective methodology means the evaluation of the objective methodology evaluation is already done so the passage this option is saying that you need to evaluate the correct uh, objective methodology to find out the uh, uh in order to distinguish between urban and rural areas so this is not correct you can ignore this answer so you have option a where it says that a diverse and measurable criteria uh, to be supplemented with human judgment option c uh, we need to create rich combination of criteria that can be applied to all urban so here both of the options are talking about the richer combination of criteria that are required but option A is also talking about the human judgment aspect, whereas option C is not talking about the human judgment aspect. As a result of which, option A will be the better answer because we have already discussed that when you have two good answers, the best answer will always be the option that talks or that gives more information about the passage rather than the option that gives less information so option a is definitely giving more information and the vital information this is an important thing a human judgment is an important criteria that is required as per the passage it is not given in c so a should be the better answer not c so that is why you can ignore this a is the best answer for the question i hope this is clear so once again uh, if you have any doubts or you need further clarifications or any points or any questions please join the whatsapp group where we will be having a lot of discussions on the uh, different uh, questions and other things and many other important information is also shared in the whatsapp group so the link is already given in the description you can join and uh, we can have a constructive uh, discussion that will improve your preparation so hope you have found the video useful if you have liked it please 
share and subscribe with your uh, subscribe and share it with your friends so that we'll get more reach thank you bye bye